On October 28, 2014, the Speaker of Nigeria's Federal House of Representatives, Aminu Tambuo, defected from the party that brought him to the House of Representatives, the People's Democratic Party, to the All Progressives Congress, APC. Now, since that event, a lot of permutations have made the rounds about the effect of that defection. Should he, for instance, lose his seat automatically as Speaker, having defected and given the provisions of Nigeria's 1999 Constitution? Well, hello and welcome. This is 60 Minutes with me, Angela Jitumobi. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Now, there have been a few defections in our political space here, but none has riled the ruling People's Democratic Party like this one, that of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Originally elected to the House as a member of the People's Democratic Party, that's the party that the President belongs to, the Speaker decided to defect to the All Progressives Congress. That's the new opposition party in the country. Now, in view of that defection and the questions raised across Nigeria's political space, my host today, my in-house legal consultant, Moyo Shorio will be taking me through the defection itself and the after effect of that defection. So, join me after the break. I'm counting down 60 minutes with Moyo Shori Onibanjo, a senior advocate of Nigeria and our in-house legal consultant on 60 Minutes with Angela. Welcome back. Welcome, Mr. Onibanjo. Thank you very much for coming back on 60 Minutes with me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Right. So, the defection happened. There had been a lot of speculation prior to October 28th that that was going to happen. Uh, a lot of people had seen his friendship, in quote, uh, with members of the All Progressives Congress as a sign that, in fact, he would inevitably defect. So, I wanted us to start from the defection itself the process through which he did it. Um, there had been a, a lot of analysis about that, and I thought maybe with your legal background, you'd be able to show us a little bit more light or sh you know, point us in the right direction with that defection. Let's look at the way he did it. Uh, normally, the House leader, Mulikat Akonde Adiola, would move a motion for the House to be adjourned. She did that. The next step is for that motion to be seconded. It was by her deputy, uh, the deputy house leader, Leo Ogo. And a lot of people say at that stage, all the speaker needed to do was bang his gavel to say, yes, this house remains adjourned. But it was at that point he slipped in the fact of his defection and thereafter banged his gavel to say, this house is hereby adjourned. Was he being clever by half doing it that way, or did he take advantage of a loophole which exists in that area of our lives? Um, that's looking at it from the legal angle, mm -hmm. there is no requirement in the Constitution that if the Speaker or a member 
of the House of Reps defects yes. to another party that he has to inform members at a plenary session or at a sitting of the House as a whole. So to that extent, there's no legal obligation for the Speaker to have informed the members that he was defecting. So I don't really think we need to labor ourselves yes, over that. We need to be ourselves over the timing mm. and, and what of you. Mm. So once there's no legal requirement regarding that, I, I think it's just an academic exercise to yes. say he, he informed them mm. after the house had adjourned because there's no either we could have done it either way. There's no legal requirement. Yes. He could jolly well have gone to a press conference and said, I am now defecting to another party. Yes. It's, so it's of no consequence, really. Mm. To, to, to the whole defection? No, no, it's uh, of no consequence. Yeah. That, that timing mm. is, of no, is of no consequence. And, and the surprising thing for a lot of people, the argument I keep hearing back and forth is that if the speaker um, has legal background, he is a lawyer after all, a lot of people say he will have given a lot of thought to what he's done and he must think that the law shields him and protects his right to defect. So how can we reconcile the Constitution preventing a legislator from defecting with the same Constitution guaranteeing everyone a freedom to associate with whomever you so choose to? The thing about constitutional rights is that there are also obligations. Like, they often, they, they, like it is often said mm. that your freedom ends where mind begins. Freedom has to be regulated. That it's not is total. Yes, it's not absolute. Mm. That is why, you know, it says, well, you have a car, you are free to travel, mm. but you must obtain a passport, yes. you must obtain a visa. Mm. If you do certain things, the visa will be cancelled. Mm. And or like, you know, you go to a public place, they say don't smoke. You can say, I jolly well have the freedom to smoke mm. if I want to. But we have to regulate all our freedoms mm. so that it does not infringe on our neighbor's freedom to, to, yes. to, to have a peaceful existence. Mm. So, having said that, the act of the defection itself, mm. to your mind, legal mind, what do you think has played out? Looking at the section of the Constitution that everyone seems to be quoting, uh, section 68.1G, mm. and the proviso that provided his membership of the latter political party is a result of a division in the political party of which he was previously a member or of a major of two or more political parties or faction of which he was previously sponsored. That's the test. The Constitution says you can defect if your party is factionalized. Why is everyone bringing in articles Supreme Court case there, bringing it, it's not on all fours with this, is it? No, it's not. You see, look, the, the, the situation is that the provisions that governs the defection of members of the National Assembly is not the same. For example, Section 68.1G yes. does not deal with the executive. It only deals with members of the legislature. Yes. Now, firstly, the starting point of Section 68.1G 68 is that if you do certain things, yes. you lose your seat. Right. You know. You so that's automatic. Well, it's not. It is not automatic. It says if 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 upon the occurrence of this, yes, then you're going to lose your seat. Mm. But however, Section 68 only now gives a rider to that, mm. which is what the proviso you just read. Yes. It says, however, if the reason why you defected, yes, is because there is a division or a split mm. in your political party, yes. then the defection is permissible under the Constitution. Right. Now the Speaker has come out and said, in Sokoto state of the PDP to which it belongs, yes. there is a division. How does that relate with the Supreme Court decision when Governor Amechi and the other five, the new PDP, you remember when they left the PDP yes. and the court decided that no, there is no faction in the PDP. 
can we apply the judgment in that to this to say if the court says there is no division in the PDP in the national level, is there a difference here? Well, firstly, that case that you're referring to mm. has not been taken to finality. The Supreme Court has not decided on it. All right. I believe it was either the state or the federal high court that determined it at the first instance. Right. I know and I'm aware that that decision is on appeal. Mm. But it does say that at the national level, mm. because those are the facts of that situation, it says at the national level, there is no division in the PDP. There is nothing like the new PDP. PDP. Now, the speaker has said in Sokoto State, and that's, that's the distinction of the PDP of which I belong, yes. there is a division. Well, whether that is so or not, it is for the court to determine. Right. Until the court determines that, yes. he remains a member of the National Assembly and it remains the speaker. So the provisions are not automatic per se. No. It needs interpretation of a court because now what you have is that the speaker on one hand says there's a division. The PDP on the other hand says no division. Yes. And then that is why, that is precisely why the constitution created a role for the courts. Where two parties contain the opposite of one position, then the courts will adjudicate between them and give a decision. So it is for the court to say, in Sokoto State, yes. there is no division. Or uh -huh. in Sokoto State, there is a division. Or to even go further to say, look, you cannot separate Sokoto PDP from national PDP. Uh -huh. So there is no division. But it is not for anybody to sit down, apart from a duly constituted and competent court of law, to give that conclusion that there is or there is no division. Even it. if it is the members of Sokoto's PDP coming out to say, no, we're not divided here. Even if it is the members of a Sokoto PDP who say so. Yes. Because they say so, but the speaker says otherwise. Else. So there's a dispute which a court of law must resolve. You know, the reason I wanted to look at this issue of Tambuwal's defection is that having read a lot of opinion, it comes across to me that Nigerians think once there has been a breach of the constitution, in fact, you don't need to wait for anything else. Everything must kick in as if, you know, the law or the courts have spoken. Looking at the reaction of the Inspector General of Police, for instance, and I want to tell you, you know, give you a quote of what he said. He says, in view of the recent defection of Tambua and having regard to the clear provision of Section 68.1G of the Constitution, the Nigeria Police Force has redeployed its personnel attached to his office. End of quote. What would be your reaction to that? With due respect to the then acting Inspector General of Police, that is one of the greatest acts of impunity that in recent times that we have seen. Because clearly the police, their duties is well spe spelled out by law. Section 4 of the Police Act, Act. specifies the duties of the Nigerian police force which includes the investigation of crimes, the apprehension of people who commit crimes, mm. right? Yes. Now, in all this that has transpired, has the speaker committed a crime? No. Defection is not a crime. Even if, let's yes. assume that maybe a crime was committed, yes. does the police pass judgment and say, this accused person is guilty, we send you to jail? They don't. They still submit those charges, the evidence that they got when, when investigating, mm. they still submit it to a court. Now, in this case, it is even worse because they do not have that role to pronounce that anybody yeah. has violated any law, whether it is a constitution or whether it is a bylaw, a regulation. Mm. The police does not have that constitutional right. The police cannot be the investigator and the, 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 and the judge at the same time. Okay. So if the police wanted to withdraw his security detail, 
that wasn't the reason why. It, it, it couldn't have been because of the fact of his defection. No, no, no. They have no powers to do that. Mm -hmm. it could, they, 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 because they have turned themselves, the police or the IG has turned himself into a court of law. It is only a court of law that can make that pronouncement. Mm -hmm. Section 6 of the Constitution yes. vests the courts created in the Constitution with the rights to adjudicate matters affecting the civil rights and obligations of citizens yes. or people in Nigeria. Now, what is involved is the civil right or obligation to provide security for the speaker. Only the court can determine whether this man can or cannot continue to enjoy police protection. Right. It is not for the police to, this, to, to determine. It is ultra-virus their constitutionally specified roles. So, for the, the sake of those who are just joining us now, yeah. um, uh, let's reiterate it. In your opinion, the fact of the defection alone is not enough to remove him as the Speaker of the House, given the proviso um, in, in the Constitution. Yes, but the most definitely, the fact that he's defected yes. does not mean that the minute one defects, then you lose your seat automatically. Mm. No. Mm. Especially where he says that there is a division in my political party, right. which the Constitution permits. Take, for example, the other matter, the case you referred to when about 30-something PDP lawmakers yes. defected to the APC. They didn't lose their seats automatically. They're still there, hmm. sitting. But the matter is in court. The day that the Supreme Court says, because you defected, you have lost your seats, automatically. Then, that is when the police will now enforce that decision hmm. and then they lose their seats, and but not before. And then that will be when, going forward, if anything like that subsequently happens, we can all turn around and say, well, the Supreme Court has spoken yes. on matters like this. When yes. you defect, it's automatic you lose your seat. Yes, we can now say the Supreme Court has said that. Mm. But even at the, as at that, it might not be automatic because circumstances vary. So anybody can come and say, oh, my case is distinguishable from that Supreme Court decision. Right. And as such, what do you do? Submit his own case to, to the courts as well. Yes. Mm. Join us again after the break. Who knows Abi better thing? Abi who knows like better thing? Ha. Hmm. All these fine fine things where they see so. Now money go make the thing do and now. Abi, I say, it's like, you know, I mean, excuse me, I did pay my tax. I did do a thing. I did pay my tax. Say you don't pay your own tax. Have you pay your tax? Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it's 60 Minutes with me, Angela Ajitmobi, on my hot seat today. Moyo Shoreoni Banjo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. And we're looking at the event of the defection of the Speaker of Nigeria's Federal House of Representatives. Now, what do we know about Nigeria's Speaker, Aminu Tambua? He was born on the 10th of January, 1966. He holds a Bachelor of Laws degree from the Uthman Damfoja University in Sokoto State, that's in the northern part of Nigeria. He graduated in 1991, was called to the bar in 1992. Now, he was elected to the House of Representatives to represent Sokoto, Kebi, and Tambua Federal Constituency. He's a Speaker of Nigeria's Seventh House of Representatives. He's been Speaker since 2011, having assumed office as a member of the House on the 29th day of May 2011. 
He's a former member of the same house. He was elected there in 2007, where he was the deputy chief whip. Now, Ms. Onibwanji, let's look at the effect of that defection. You've said that even though he has defected, the court is still needed to determine whether or not he remains speaker or he loses that seat. But a lot of speculation now about the reconvening of the House. A lot of people who, who posit that he lost the seat automatically once he defected say because of that fact, he shouldn't be the one to reconvene. Anyone else can reconvene the House before the December 3 date that he was, he is given. That cannot be correct. Because like I explained, he yes. remains speaker. The issue is not even whether he remains speaker. Yeah. Because defection only affects his right to continue as a member. Yeah. So as explained, except a court gives his imprimantor mm. to that defection, yes. he remains a member. And by virtue of being a member, he remains the speaker. So the people saying that because he defected, yes. he's no longer a member and no longer the speaker, and so he, he shouldn't be conveying that they're, they're, they're wrong mm. because the laws do not support their position. Right. The position is that he still remains a member till date until the court says otherwise. Right. If he remains a member, he remains the speaker, and he's the only one both constitutionally and by the rules and procedure of the House itself, who can reconvene the House. So we, we mustn't confuse uh, the politicking going on mm. with what the law says. Right. Because, because it's a very seriously political issue, it's also a, a matter that people get very, very sentimental about. about. Yes. The law tends to be relegated to the back seat. But anybody who sits down and looks at the provisions of the Constitution will be in no doubt that it is only a court that can say categorically he is no longer a member of the House. What if the members of the House decide that they don't want him as Speaker again? Brilliant. That, that they are entitled to do. Because he was appointed, he was elected in the first place by his peers, by members. So members, once the House reconvenes legally, can also say, we don't want you anymore. And then that will make it effective. That will deal with the issue of the speakership. Mm. But they cannot, members cannot remove him from as the a House. Member. <laughs> yeah. But they can remove him yes. as their speaker. Okay. Now, one of the other issues is this issue of majority and minority you know I, one of my good friends in, in the people's democratic party says only a majority party can produce a speaker i've looked through the constitution i've looked at section 50 i've looked at section 68 uh, yes the constitution prescribes that there shall be a speaker appointed from among the members of the house but it is silent on whether the majority party or the minority party produces a, such, such a speaker. So can we say conventional practice, perhaps best international standards, must apply here? The position, the, the, your friend perhaps is confusing the presidential system of government, which we practice, and the parliamentary system. Right. Now, in Nigeria, section 51B yes. governs the appointment or the election of a speaker. What does the section say? It says the members from amongst themselves yes. shall elect one of them to be the speaker. It doesn't say shall elect somebody from the majority party. It says the members of the house as a whole yes. shall elect one of them. So in effect, any member of the National Assembly can be elected as speaker. Whether it's a court party. Whether it, whether it comes from a party that, that only has one seat. Him. Yes. So it says any member. It doesn't mm. say majority. It doesn't say minority. So the issue that 
it's only a member of the majority party yes. who can be speaker mm. is also not backed up by the mm. constitution. Okay. But of course, in practice, mm. if a party is in the majority, it uses its numbers yes. to elect one of its own as the speaker. That is perhaps what they're confusing. Mm. But when, what does the law say? The law doesn't say the speaker must come from the majority party mm. or that the Senate president must come from the majority party. It just says one of their own will be elected as the speaker. As painful as it may be to members of the PDP that, yes, this man was elected because of our numbers and he has left now uh, to a party that doesn't have as many numbers as we have, there's nothing they can really do about it for now. Under the same section 51C, if they can get two-thirds of the votes of the House, they can remove him. As Speaker. As Speaker. It's, it's very easy. The Constitution is there. All we have to do is to follow it and apply it. If they want to remove him, it says if you get two-thirds. Two so if you are saying that you have the numbers, yes. then muster the two-thirds. Exactly, and then let them, let them remove him. But we must be seen to practice and adhere to constitutionalism and mm. not impunity. Now when we talk about what the acting IGP as it then was did, yes. you begin to wonder, when in Undo State, the governor and the entire state House of Assembly all the all the Labour Party members, members yes. including the Speaker, defected to the PDP. Why wasn't this same act of impunity applied to that Speaker? Why were the security aids of the Ondo State Speaker yes, not why, withdrawn? Why were they not withdrawn? You know, so that that even goes to sh to show you that it was not a decision backed up by the law. Mm. That that is impun. That is what impunity is about. Yes. Is about what pleases you or what doesn't please you. Mm. Because if it's the law, the law applies across board. So whether you're PDP, whether you're APC, the law, justice is blindfolded. Yes. It doesn't know your affiliation, it doesn't know your race, it doesn't know your gender. It applies to everybody. Mm. And that's the irony of it. Perhaps if the law had been applied like this, like it was to the speaker, if it had been applied at the time when the Ondo speaker also defected no one would be crying out now about the, the treatment of the speaker and it couldn't even have been applied because the law doesn't give him give the police such powers yeah. but what we're, what 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 gives credence to people who say yes. this is this is impunity this is sectional and this is just in support of one party against the other yes is that why didn't you do the same against somebody who defected to the PDP. Yes. Mark me, impunity in any guise must be condemned, whether it is by APC, Labour Party, or PDP. Because if we, if we want to make progress as a nation, yes. then we must abide by the due process of law. Regardless of the political Regardless of affiliation. Of our political leanings or mm. affiliations. Mm. Mm. Okay, so let's pause again for the sake of those just joining us. We've established that only the Speaker can reconvene the House yes. if, it, if the House is going to reconvene be, before the 3rd of December. Yeah. Only a court can determine that the Speaker is no longer a Speaker or no longer a member of Sorry, the House. No, no, the court cannot determine whether it's no longer the Speaker, okay. but whether it's no longer a member of, of the, the house. house by virtue of his defection. Of, of his defection. Okay. It is the members themselves who will determine mm. if they can get two-thirds majority to remove the speaker. Okay. So the court must determine that the act of vacating the seat, it has happened. Yes. Without the court, that vacating of his seat will not happen. No, will. So anyone hoping that he will resign, for instance. So some people suggesting Tambuwal should resign. If you defect, then you resign. You know, where do you place that kind of advice? <laughs> no, 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 you know, only, <laughs> only Mr. Speaker yes. will be in the best position to say yes. whether he wants to resign or not. Yes. I, I just believe that 
we should intervene, not on sentimental basis, but to say, look, we have rules, we have laws, we have guidelines. Let us stick to these laws to the letter mm -hmm. for the betterment of our society. Because if we don't, and we then begin to do selective justice yes. or allow people to make up their own laws as they go along, mm -hmm. then the society will be seriously endangered. How does the, a breach of the Constitution work? You know, and I'm just trying to look at the larger picture now. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, for instance, the president commits an act which the Constitution says constitutes an impeachable offense, would perhaps the IG, you know, step in and say, you've committed an impeachable offense, so you have to leave now? Exactly. That is precisely the point we're making. In that scenario that you just spoke about, let's assume the president cons co commits constitutional breaches. Yes. Is the ID entitled to say, because you have violated section XYZ of the constitution, yes. you are no longer the president, I withdraw your security? Mm. Of course not. Even to the layman on the streets, even yes. to somebody in a primary school, they will laugh off that suggestion and say this is ridiculous. You know, just listening to you this second, it occurs to me that perhaps it would just be easier if it's made an offense to disagree. Maybe it would be easier. <laughs> because it looks like it is an offense to disagree with the ruling party. It's seen as disrespect. I, I don't know if I'm coming across, if I'm making yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, the thing is that Tolerance is the word. Mm. We, our leaders need to be more tolerant of each other, more tolerant of opposition, more tolerant of people with, who, who disagree with them. It's not possible for the about 160 million Nigerians to all like be on you. the same page yeah. or to just line up behind either the president mm. or our state governor yes. or our senator. Yeah. They, there must be areas of disagreement. Mm. Now, any time that crops up where somebody disagrees with you or somebody refuses to tow your line, are we now going to resort to intimidating, harassing, and generally usurping the laws in order to score points mm. against our opponents? Because if we do that, then, you know, anarchy mm. will be the order of the day. Anarchy will be the result. Because if the PDP does that at the national level, the APC does that at the state level, then where is the rule of law in all of this? And there is no society that can progress where there is no law and order. The great democracies that we we all look up to and visit continually yes. all the time. I mean, it's an open secret. Their success is based on the fact that there is extreme law and order. Mm. And, I, and I use that word, I extreme. emphasize on it. Extreme law and order. There is no room for a single ounce of impunity. Join us again after the break. I want to present myself as an African. And I know, and I know, and I know, and I know, I know what you like. I know, I know, I know, I know what you like. Everything you love, baby, you love, like, baby, you love, baby, you love, baby, you love. I know, and 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 I know, baby, you like, baby, you like, baby, you like, baby, you like, baby, you like. Welcome back. My concluding moments now with Moyo Shoryonibanjo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. So, it just occurred to me, has this defection now opened up the vacuum? Is there a vacuum in our constitution or you think that area is still pretty tight? There is no vacuum, so to speak, but you know, in jurisprudential law, yes. they tell you that, you know, as society develops, 
the laws need to catch up with it. So with every experience that you know we have, yes. then the laws are to be amended to fall in line with those kind of things. But right now, from all that has transpired, the laws, you know, adequately take care of the situation mm. if the laws are applied to the letter. Mm. If we follow the process. Yeah. All right, let me just read something to you. This is uh, the minority leader in the House, Femi Badger, saying this now. He says, just as the legislature cannot regulate the workings of the presidency or determine for the president when he should call federal executive council meetings and we note that there was a time he did not for months so also can the presidency not determine for the house of representatives when to reconvene or meet end of quote so is Mr. Agbaja right with that? He is because, you know, I mean, one of the basic principles of constitutional law is the doctrine of separation of powers. Yes. That is why you have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. No arm is to interfere in the operations or duties of the other. Yes. You know, that doctrine has stood the test of time. And it's only perhaps in banana republics yes. and despotic states where you don't see that doctrine being applied. But in most states, even in, in countries that have monarchies, yeah. they try to make sure they also have, the monarch doesn't make the laws, mm. they try to have a, a, a parliament or legislature, yes. they have the executive and they have the judiciary. Mm. Our nation should not be seen to be taking a step back into the dark ages. Mm. We've gone past all that during the, during, during the military regimes. Mm where the executive and, and, and the legislature was fused into one. Yes. We have gone past that. We are now in an era of constitutional democracy, which we must all strive to ensure that it works and it succeeds. So show us now the difference. Why is it that it is only uh, defections in the National Assembly that this constitution has spoken about? Can we take it to mean then that anyone else, as long as you're not in the National Assembly or you're not in the House of Assembly, you're free to defect as you like? It, it only talks about, yes, the Constitution only talks about parliamentarians. It, this, there's also a similar provision for State House of Assembly. Yes. But it, it, it doesn't affect the executive. When the Vice President Atiku Abubakar defected, for instance, uh, that was why the, the court couldn't hold anything against him. Yes, yes, because it doesn't say anything about either the president or the deputy or the governor or his deputy defecting. Mm. So the constitution is, is or was silent on that. And you have to bear in mind that this provision enacted in section 60... 81G, G, yes. you know, stems from our experience in the, I believe, in the First Republic, mm. when you had the first set of defections from one party to the other. Mm. So trying to guard against that is, is how come we arrived at this point. point yeah, when in, we had that. In, when we had that. As it is, in this Republic now, we have seen issues or cases where the entire executives the defect yes you know so the time might have come whereby we also need to curb if you come to governance through a political vehicle maybe we need to look at it and say you can't ditch that political vehicle and go somewhere else mm. for everyone elected for everyone elected mm. but how you know i'm just thinking how you know, can you force people to remain in a political party when it's obvious everything has fallen apart? Yes, uh, you well, know. yes, you see, so those are the pros and the cons mm. that need to be weighed when those, those amendments are going to be proposed. Mm. Because, you know, for every amendment, it, it obviously would have its advantages. Yes. It also would have its disadvantages. disadvantages. Yes. In, in, in a civilized debate, you know, then the best will be produced 
mm. which will be in the interest of everybody. Yes. Both the people who want to defect and the people who don't want them to defect. Mm. The argument will be, why don't you want him to defect? Yes. Like you say, every, anyone should have a right to say, look, this is a sinking ship. Yes. I want to, I want to jump. Yes. Especially if our political parties don't have ideology. I mean, for instance, you know, if you were with a certain party in the United States, I would know what you were thinking on abortion rights, on women's rights, on, on, on voting rights, on health care. But we don't have that kind of ideology there. So, you know, why do you want to prevent anyone from defecting, really? You, you, you see, to my mind, um, sometimes when we compare ourselves, we judge ourselves very harshly. Mm -hmm. When we look at, um, like in this instance, ideology of our parties. Yes. Party politics in Nigeria has suffered a stunted growth because of several interventions by the military. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it now, how much experience of legislating yes. do we have? since 1999 and you compare us we are comparing ourselves to nations who have been doing this for over 200 years yes. mm -hmm. so it is most also, it is most likely that at their own inception too they had all these they had all problems these, yes, yeah. they had all these issues mm -hmm. but the thing is that they, they 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 stuck with due process to see them through mm -hmm. they didn't allow impunity they didn't allow arbitrariness, they didn't allow parochialism and yes. all the things plaguing us yes. to detract them from their goal. They, stayed, they kept their eye on the ball, they, kept, they stayed focused and said, okay, look, this is the law, we apply it, come rain, come, come shine, right. which is what we should do here. Yes, no, 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 this is not the Eldorado, nobody is perfect, no system is perfect, but given time, all these cultures will develop. I, and that is my and will evolve. Yes, it will evolve, you know, into a state whereby our parties will become ideology driven. And so, you know, those who are saying, uh, yeah, you know, the, the Undo state governor defected and nothing happened, the defection of a governor is totally different. Yes, it's totally different from the defection of a member of the National Assembly. Or, or House they, of they, Assembly. They, they, the comparison that can be done yes. is that of the Undo State Speaker right. and the members of the Labour Party in the State House of Assembly who defected to the PDP. Yes. That's the comparison that one can draw. Down. And, and can't one, you know, for the sake of argument, say, well, you know, the Acting Inspector General of Police didn't get involved with the Undo State Speaker because he is the policeman at the top, the federal, national, not the commissioner of police in the state. And so because this speaker issue is a national issue, that's why he's come out. Don't forget that the, there is only one Nigerian police force. They have, you know, state commissioners. Yes. They are all responsible to the inspector general of police. So if, for example, riots, insurrection, breakout in Lagos State. Yes. He cannot sit in Abuja and fold his hands and say, oh, it's not my business because there's a commissioner there's a there. Commissioner there. Mm. So I don't think that argument holds much water. Okay. So as it is, the House is adjourning, adjourned till December 3. Yes. Um, can Speaker Tambua change his mind on, on that adjournment date, even though he banged the gavel on, on December 3? Yes, the, the Constitution and the rules and procedures of the House are entitled him to reconvene the House he, el, earlier. Right. If, you know, issues of maybe uh, national importance or public importance crop up. Who determines what is national importance? The Speaker, and I believe they have what they call the leadership principal officers. officers the majority leader the minority leader mm -hmm. the house leader the yes, deputy yes, yes. okay so he can decide on grounds of national emergency that yes. we're, we're reconvening the house yes, yes. and he will be covered by the law yes, for doing be. that yes. um what do you say then to those who think there's still some people who think that the president or the presidency 
is like a principal or a headmaster and he should wield the big stick and remove Tambua from office. Unfortunately, you know, we cannot do that in constitutional democracy. We cannot do that because there is separation of powers. The president did not elect or appoint the speaker. He did not elect or appoint the Senate president. He did not appoint the Chief Justice of the Federation. So that's why we have separation of powers. Right. His own duty is to execute the laws that are passed. It's to take care of the day-to-day -day management of the affairs of the nation. He, he is not to prosecute anybody. He is not to judge anybody. And where will we put the role of the political party now? Those who are also calling on the PDP or, you know, to deal with this matter. What role does the party have here now? I thought once elections were concluded and winners declared and, you know, they've all assumed offices, the role of the party is whittled down. Oh, no, no, not necessarily, the, the, because the party comes to power with a program. So the party, even though it's in the background, you know, can advise the executive, implement our policies, implement our programs, but they, 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 they have no, no constitutional role to, to play, play here. in governance. How can they, you know, get involved in the process of removing this man from the it's house to, you, know, you know, the, the parties, they normally do what they call caucus meetings. Yeah. So you will see that the PDP would have its um, Senate caucus meeting mm. or National Assembly House of Reps meetings. Yes. At, I believe at those caucus meetings, that is where they tell their members what to do. Mm. And their members will go within the confines of the law yes. to, to achieve those objectives. And on a final note, can we infer that the Constitution must have intended the Speaker to come from a majority party? I mean, surely, if we're talking democracy, we're talking numbers. Can't we infer it that... You see, a, any trained lawyer will tell you that in interpreting a statute, yes. right, you should not read into the provision anything that has been left out. If the framers, the people who drafted the Constitution, yes. they didn't say, in electing your speaker, the speaker must come from the party with the majority of members then there is no way that anybody, with all due respect, can read th that into the... Con because what, in effect, what you'll be doing is you are reading into the Constitution mm. provisions which are not expressly written set out there. there. And this is a written Constitution. Yeah, so yes, what yes. isn't written there cannot be implied mm, in. No, 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 no. Not in that circumstance. Mm. Not in that circumstance. Thank you very much, Mr. Nibani, for coming back on 60 Minutes with me. It's always a great pleasure. Thank you very much. And that's it for this week. Don't forget to like 60 Minutes with Angela on Facebook or follow me on Twitter, Angela at 60 Minutes. I'm Angela Ajitumobi. Thank you for watching. Yeah.